just feeling a a stirring of the Lord right now. (laughs) If you don't know, the Lord is moving us into new things. He's shaking the things that can be shaken. And that as we were just worshiping this morning, it, it, it reminded me of just something that happened just earlier this week. There was just a, a commissioning that happened of someone, and uh, and Lord was just all over it. And, it. and I feel like even today, this is not just a message. This is not just a word to, you know, the feel-good message that we're going to get. You know, it's Mother's Day, and we want to pump up the moms, and we do. <laughs> we love the moms. And, but there is something greater right now that we're all stepping into, and, and it's those that say yes to what he's calling us to. He is, and he's calling his bride. He is calling his bride right now into the deeper things, into the deeper waters. And, and he's saying, will you, will you be the one that goes for me? And it requires greater eyesight. It requires greater wisdom and greater understanding, greater knowledge of him in this time. And we cannot get caught up in the things of this world. We will miss what the Lord is doing in this time if we focus on the things of this world. There there is the supernatural and there is the natural. And if we think that the natural is more powerful than the supernatural and we focus on those things, then we have the wisdom of man and not of God. And he's calling us to have his wisdom, which means that we have new eyesight to see things that we've never seen before. And it requires that we actually don't use our, it's not our, our physical eyesight to see. And it's, it's not about what we see and perceive in the natural. It's what we actually perceive and we see in the supernatural. That he's intensifying our spiritual senses in this season. And it might require a dulling of our natural senses. Zechariah, I just remember Zechariah, it's like it, the angel had to actually shut his mouth for a period of nine months because his spiritual senses were not aware enough to, to keep his mouth shut and he was going to mess things up. And John was, John the Baptist was about to be born to him and, and he was like, I can't, angels like, or God is like, I can't afford for, for, for him to mess this up because he isn't perceiving and seeing what I'm doing right now. It requires a spiritual sense. I just, I'm going to talk to this real quickly. And there's a message today, I believe, that's going to, from Christy, that's going to be, in a sense, the beginning of a commissioning and something that is leading us into these things. And, but this Isaiah 6 just came back to me. I wasn't planning to go here, but I'm going to read this. It says, in the, in the, in the year of King, that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Those above him were, uh, above him were, I'm sorry, were seraphs, and each with six wings, and With two wings, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet. With two, they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. First of all, that's the first thing I feel like we need to see. Here's the angels calling, Holy, holy, holy to the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Do we see it? Do we see his glory right now on the earth? Because it is full of his glory. At that sound of the voices, it says that the doorposts and the thresholds shook. If you don't know, there's a shaking going on right now. And the temple was filled with smoke. And this is what Isaiah said. He goes, Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King and the Lord Almighty. And I believe that even the church right now, a lot of us, it's this woe to me. Like, who who am I to be the one to go for you? Who am I to, to go 
on <laughs> into the mission field, whatever that may be. We always we go, well, mission field means I got to go to Africa or I got to go to India. Mission fields mean you go, you go exactly where the Lord is calling you right now in this time. It might be to your neighbor's house. It might be to, to a family member, but you go where the Lord is calling you, and that is your mission field. And if you think you don't have a mission field, you're wrong. <laughs> we all have a mission field, and we're all called to the mission field, and it's where God is calling you and leading you, and there's a passion that he's put in your life. There's a passion that he's stirring in your heart, and all you have to do is say yes because he's the one that commissions us to go. He's the one that, that leads us to go. So don't, don't get caught up in your abilities and what you can do and what you can't do. That's, this is Moses going, I can't even speak. How am I supposed to lead a nation? And he goes, it's not about you. It's about me. I created you. I made you who you are. Don't tell me whether what I what you can do and what you can't do because God is our creator. He's the one that actually set us apart for this time right now. So don't think you can't do the things that the Lord is stirring in your heart. What does God do? <laughs> says he, he sends the seraphs. It says, one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand. When he had taken it, he'd taken it, with tongs from the altar, and with it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Isaiah didn't do anything. He stood there. The seraph came and touched his lips. The seraph said, No, your guilt has been taken away and your sin has been atoned for. But it didn't, it didn't end there. And this is, this is, I feel like this is the other problem with the church right now is, is we go, oh, okay, I'm good. Everything's good. My sin's atoned for. That's the end of the story. <laughs> it's not. When I heard the voice of the Lord, so right after, right after being the sins are atoned for, this is it. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? There's an atonement for our sins that we can come into the kingdom, that we can have a relationship with the Father through Christ, only through Christ, only through Jesus do we have this relationship. But there's a purpose, and it's right here. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here am I send me. And he said, go and tell the people. Proclaim the good news. Preach the gospel. This is the calling on our life. There's a mission that you have. There are different ways to do this. It's not, it's not just go and, and everybody do it the exact same way because that's, that's how they do it over here. This must be the way to do it. The Lord will show you exactly how you're supposed to do it. He'll give you the strategies, the downloads, the plans from heaven. It isn't about following what somebody else is doing. It's about following Jesus. He's made you unique. He's made you with a purpose. And he's sending you. He's sending us, each one of us. So I believe as part of this commissioning that, that we're going to be stepping into, and I think it's not just today, there's a commissioning that the Lord is leading us into, but our hearts have to be soft before the Lord. They have to be prepared before the Lord. It's those that are pure in heart that have the calluses removed that can actually see with their heart and hear with their heart that those are the ones that will go. Those are the ones that will see God and those are the ones that will actually experience the kingdom. Do you want it? Because it's yours if you want it. There's another scripture I'm just going to tie into real quick. I feel, and it's, it's Christy's going to be speaking into this. So uh, I want to be careful not to, but it, it's all about sight. It's, it's hearing and sight and that we get this hearing and this sight. Uh, but there's something if we don't get it that, that not all will get it. Not all will say, here am I, send me. I, I pray that for us, that we don't go, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the one that sits back, kind of like the Israelites going, Moses, you go up. You tell me. Tell me what you hear from the Lord. We are all supposed to hear from the Lord. We're all supposed to go up on that mountain and get his plans and bring them back and establish them on this earth. Every single one of us, 
You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be an evangelist. You just have to be you and you're called of him to go. Every person is called to go. But it says this, it says, whoever has been given, or I'm sorry, let me start over. Whoever has will be given more and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Those that say yes and those that go after the plans of the Lord, those that say yes to their own mission and the calling that God has put in their life that is birthed in them that says this is what you're for, he says, I'll give you everything you need. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will bless you. I'll carry you on my wings. I'll be your refuge. I'll be your strong your strong fortress. I'll, I will be everything for you. But abide in me. Stay in me. Listen to me. Trust in me. This is what it says right after that. It says, this is why I speak in parables. This is Jesus speaking. He says, though seeing they do not see and though hearing they do not hear or understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Right after the Lord commissioned Isaiah, those were the words, though seeing they don't see. And though hearing, they don't hear or understand. And here's the thing. It says, you will be hearing, but never understanding. You will be seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused, and they hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn, and I will heal them. Let's be those that turn. Let's be those that see and hear and remove the calluses of our heart. And this is not for the unbeliever. This is for us right now. If we're going, yeah, boy, for those people. No, it's, it's, for, it's for you, and it's for me, and it's for now. And, and this is the church, I'm sorry, the church has missed it. The church is so far off base right now. The church has created so many idols and established their own ways and set things up and said, oh, Lord, isn't this good what we're doing? We're, we're worshiping you and we're, look what we've built for you and look at how we've done these things for you. And, and God's like, I didn't ask you to do any of those things. I actually sent you to go for me. So it's gonna, the commissioning actually requires a reset, a rebuild, and a, and, and a tearing down of the idols in our own lives right now. Don't look at the person next to you and say, yeah, boy, that's for you. <laughs> it's for you. It's for me. Those that are humble in heart, he's going to lift those up. Those that have that dependence on the Lord, those that say, man, I don't have it all figured out. I don't have it all figured out. You do not have it all figured out. You're not even close, and neither am I. We're, we're so far from this. But, but God is going to do this. He's going to, as we just humble ourselves, he's going to lead us into the new things. And so let's humble our hearts this morning. Let's get before him and say, God, we, we set everything aside. We say we're going to reset everything. And everything that we thought was good, Lord, we'll lay it before you. We'll lay it before the altar. And the things that burn up, the things that, that are shaken, let them be shaken. The things that remain, those are the things that we want, the heavenly things. So, Father, I pray right now, Lord, I, I ask that in this time, in this season, Lord, we would hear with our hearts, that you would remove the calluses from our hearts, that we would see with our hearts and have this understanding. Lord, would you remove all the idols and the stuff that we thought was so good, the worship that we've done to you that actually has not been acceptable worship unto the Lord. It's been worship for ourselves that we would feel good about ourselves and that we would say, look what we've done and look how we're doing these things. We say, no longer will we do that, but we will actually go up to the mountain, to the holy mountain, and we will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lord of lords. We will go on bended knee, and we will say, it is not about us. It is about you, and we will lay everything before you. 
We will lay our lives before you. We will lay our jobs before you. We will lay our families before you. We will lay our friends before you. We will lay our finances before you. We will say, none of this matters and it will all be burned up. But you alone, (laughs) you are everything. And through that, that commissioning will come to allow us to then have his heart to go after his people and to see his kingdom established on this earth. His kingdom established is his people. It's his treasured possession. You, me, those that don't know Jesus are his treasured possession. May we go for them. May we speak to them and share the love of the Father through Christ with them. Lord, I pray this in your precious name. Lord, commission us this morning. Begin that commissioning process, which requires a repentance of our hearts, which requires that that removing the calluses, that circumcision of our heart. Circumcise our hearts this morning. Just as when Joshua crossed the Jordan, and, and the first thing that they did is they stopped and they consecrated themselves. They set themselves apart unto you in a new way. And you say, well, wait, they've done this. They'd already crossed the Jordan. They were in the promised land. They were going in. They still had to stop and commission. And that commissioning came out of a circumcision. The last thing that you would think, (laughs) they did actually a, a full circumcision. As they're about to go into battle, it doesn't make sense in the natural. You wouldn't do that with your army right before you go into battle. But this is what God requires. So, Lord, circumcise our hearts as we go into battle, as we cross the Jordan. We set ourselves apart unto you. No longer to do things the way the church has done things because that's what's always done and and that's what every other church is doing, so it must be the right thing to do. No, we set ourselves apart unto you. Give us your eyes, new eyes to see, ears to hear, new wineskins. Establish us in the, the new. We, we say no longer will we go back to the old. But they say the old is better. Huh. Don't do it. Don't go back to Egypt when we can move forward into the promised land. Lord, I thank you for every person that's listening. Lord, I thank you that you're stirring hearts right now. Lord, establish your ways in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, uh, I believe Christy is going to just take this and, and take it to a whole nother level here. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> I'm so proud of my wife and love her so much. And uh, uh, what you probably don't know is every time I'm speaking, you're hearing her heart and our heart as as we spend so much time just in prayer together, seeking the Lord together. And, uh, and she's stirring my heart as she's hearing from the Lord. And so uh, this is, we are just one in this. And so what you hear when I speak, what you hear when she speaks, you're just hearing what the Lord is speaking to both of us and, and just kind of through through different perspectives. And, and she's, the, she's the fun one that just brings out the, the joy and the adventure of it. I'm the more serious one. And, and so we need each other in this. And so I'm so just blessed and honored to have such a such an amazing wife that just loves the Lord is going after the Lord and and I know I wouldn't I wouldn't even be here uh, where I am today without her so I don't know where that came from but that's just I think men your wives they are such a critical part of where you're going lead by having them lead with you and come with you and uh, and man I'll tell you when when you go together, it's so much more powerful than when you try to just go alone and she's going one way and you're going the other way. Just spend time together, seeking the Lord together at all times. We're going we're gonna to receive an offering right now and, uh, and then Christy's going to jump up and, and uh, give the word. But uh, So let's do this. I'm gonna, we're going to put up a declaration. We do this every time and uh, it's so fun that we get to declare the words of the Lord over our finances, over the things that the Lord is establishing right now. Uh, And uh, we get to give to him, and we just pray that everything is stewarded well for the kingdom. And uh, he's our provider, but we get to bless him 
as we just give of tithes and offerings. So let's do this together. Uh, let's say it out. I know you're in homes right now, but let's just speak this out together. Here we go. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Thank you for generously blessing me. You have a divine purpose for my life, and you supply all I need to fulfill my heavenly calling according to the riches of your glory in Christ Jesus. Father, I desire to please you with my giving and to be a good steward of what you have given me. Show me your truth, your ways, and your purposes regarding wealth and money. You are my God. I serve you alone. Money works for me that I might abound in every good work. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. And may this glory be revealed in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Are you on? On. There we're on. Now she's on. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we love our worship. You guys, it's been amazing. This worship team that we get to just hang out with on Sundays and other days, and um, they're just awesome. So I'm just applauding. There's a couple of us in here. We're applauding worship right now. <laughs> they're amazing. I know you're happy at home. Uh, I'm excited to share with you guys this morning, and um, what I felt like is just that this is the time that um, it's just kind of hanging out in living rooms. You guys are in your living room. I thought about keeping my pajamas on and coming up here and hanging out with you in my, my living room, which is kind of large right now, but I didn't because I felt like that might be pushing it a little too far, uh, but I, am, I just want to... Um, share from my heart this morning, and I brought a little bit of Mother's Day color for all of you moms, and I thought, you're probably drinking coffee, I'll be drinking water for now, but I wanted to drink coffee with you, and um, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do this morning, and I, I just want to um, share my heart and what the Lord's been teaching me in this season. I was asking the Lord, uh, what are what are you wanting to share with moms? And a lot of it is just coming um, from my heart, just things that I've been walking through. It's been a, a rough two and a half, three-ish months. Um, there's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of adjustment. There's a lot of um, multitasking for us moms, homeschooling, which might or might not be new, um, but even just trying to get your kids on more Zoom calls and more dinners at home because restaurants aren't out, uh, not open, and you can't go out. And uh, yeah, it's just been hard. I would say for me, it's, it's been interesting, and it's been hard. And I um, was telling our, our team earlier when we were talking about sermon prep, I said, yeah, it's just been um, crying in the shower at times. It's just been... Um, you know, sandwiches for dinner because you do not feel like cooking one more time. And yes, we are having leftovers for the third day in a row. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of phone calls, a lot of, now you kids, you're going to get along and you're going to go to your room and you're going to go to your room and you're going to be over there because this is how we're going to space you out so you quit killing each other. And there's just been a lot of um, new things that we don't normally um, have to face because we can we can spread out, but moms, you're doing awesome, and um, the Lord is with you, and He is right there in your midst. And um, I feel like He's put some focus on some things in this season that we wouldn't normally see. And we know this, you guys know this, that these challenges they reveal character. And so we're actually getting to get a sharp focus in on our own character and things that we didn't know might have been there. And for me, I feel like I thought I was a lot more patient than I am, <laughs> so I realized uh, I still got a long ways to go on my patience level, and uh, there's definitely um, some mechanisms that I, I'm like, oh, it'd be really nice to have 
um, Starbucks right now. I would love to just get away and, and get out. And moms, I know there's no, that's fine. There's, I'm not condemning any of that. But we also need to remember that in these seasons, um, the Lord's giving this gift to us to look at things that we wouldn't otherwise see. I have water. Yes. Should I drink it right here? It's coffee. I'm going to pretend. You know, sometimes we just have to imagine we're on a beach somewhere, even though our feet are in the bathtub and it's not the ocean in India or something. But um, where I was going is that the Lord's giving us the opportunity to see things in a little bit sharper focus and to draw some things to our attention that we may not have noticed before. And that's a gift. So even though things are hard, even though things have been difficult to walk through in this time, that we are actually being given an opportunity to, um, I feel like he's kind of putting us under a microscope for ourselves. No, it's easy to put other people under a microscope right now, and I would encourage you to actually let the Lord draw you into the things that he wants to work on in our own lives. So that's what I'm going to share with you, what he's taking me through today, in the hopes that it encourages each one of you. This is moms, dads, kids. I call them moms a second time or a third time or a fourth time. You may be, I don't like grand mom as much as other wonderful names we have for our amazing moms that have mommed again and again and again. Um, so that's what I want to share. That's my heart. And as I was picking up this Bible, you can probably see it. I don't know how well it shows up, but every time I looked down, I looked at to look at all these wavy lines in my Bible. Do you to see that? I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a lot of wavy lines on the front of my Bible, and that's, if you remember, that's when I dropped it in a bucket of water. And it just is a great reminder that I make mistakes, and we all make mistakes. <laughs> And I get to see that every time I look at my Bible, that um, it's larger than it should be. And that's because of me. <laughs> so uh, be gracious with yourselves. We're not, we're not perfect. We know we're not perfect. But we sure are on an adventure with God. And he wants to take us places that we've never been. So I'm going to just grab my notes because I feel like it's, for me, it's kind of, um, it's a storyline but I want to make sure it makes sense to you, because in my head, I walked through this with the Lord, and it made sense to me. I want to communicate it clearly. So I'm going to use these notes, but I'm also going to try to talk just from my heart. Um, so like we said, we've been in a season of shaking, and we get this opportunity to rethink what we're doing. Um, and as I thought about this, I want to just walk you down. The Lord gave me this illustration as we were in worship. It's like he's walking me through a path in a garden and he's having a conversation with me, helping me look at things in my own life and things around me and saying, okay, Christy, I want you to take this time to breathe and understand and grow. So in my heart with the Lord, I said, Lord, so it's, it's come down to this. It's come, it's come down to an audience of one There's, um, what are we doing? What are we actually doing? The Lord, um, he was just having a conversation with me, and I said, okay, so church looks different. It's really just um, one or two. And I said, Lord, um, are you... Are you disappointed with the way church looks now? Now that it's one, now that it's two, it's not a huge gathering. Are you disappointed that we don't have the big worship gathering happening in the seats and, and people coming in and smiling and hugging? And I felt like he started to question me in a different way. And it was saying, um, do you think I'm pleased by your soft seats? Do you think I'm pleased by your good-smelling coffee? Do you think I'm pleased by your 68-degree temperature in your big buildings and your smooth traffic flow? And uh, do you think I'm pleased by the lights and the sound and the way um, people engage? Oh, thank you, Anna. Look at this mom. She doesn't stop momming. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and it hit me. I just, and I started to think, Lord, 
have we been missing it? Have we been missing? Is this a chance to see what the Lord wants us to look at in how we do church and how we represent who he is on this earth? And the Lord just started to weigh in on me, you guys. Luke 7, all right? If you have your Bible or I don't know, if you're watching on your phone, you can't, I guess you can't look at your phone at the same time. But if you want to just, I'm going to read through this. It's going to be on your screen. This got weighty for me, and this is sort of the path in that garden that he's going to take us along this morning just to help us come to grips with some things, I think, that are on his heart. So I'll read it. Sometimes I start reading a little too fast. All right, guys, slow me down. There's a couple of y'all. Verse 18 in Luke 7. John's disciples told him all about these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Are you who we've been waiting for? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? And at that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. And so he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. And after John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those, were not, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes. I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, yet the one who is the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And then there's a little insert, and then Jesus keeps talking, and this is the insert. It says, all the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God was the was God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. That baptized by John, really quick, it's a baptism into repentance. John baptized for repentance. So those that realized they were walking in the wrong direction, they came to John and received this baptized for forgiveness of sins to repent and turn. And Jesus came and did a different kind of baptism. So this is Jesus continuing in 31. To what then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in a marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not cry. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, he has a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by all her children. Uh, There's a few things that I want to share from here, and so try to hang with me. The first thing I want to see is we're going to go back, and and I, I just started to dialogue with the Lord, and it took me a little while to digest this set of verses. This isn't a comfortable set of verses for me, Um, It probably isn't for you either, but um, one of the things the Lord was showing me, I said, I asked the Lord, I was like, Lord, um, are we looking like your kingdom then? We see a little bit of what the kingdom looks like right there, but I asked that that question, and I, I have to say it was like silence. I didn't hear angels rejoicing in heaven. I didn't hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. It wasn't that resounding applause that I'm hoping for from the Lord when I see his face. And when I, when I say this, I say this about my own life, and, I, say, and I, I think the Lord wants to challenge us about where we are as his church, as his family. Are we looking like the kingdom of God? If I read to you really quick what the kingdom looks like, it's in verse 22 of that section of John 7. This is the kingdom. The blind receive sight. The lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. 
So that's the kingdom. And so I asked the Lord, okay, so you mean that our big gatherings and our worship services, though I'm not saying they're bad and I'm not saying they're wrong, I don't think they're the fulfillment of the full kingdom of God. I don't feel that we're fully walking in the adventure of the life with Jesus that he's invited us to. I think we've sat down on some of these things. And I told Mike the other day, we were talking about this last week. I said, I feel like we as the church have atrophied the muscles of our people by putting them in these soft, cushy seats, and we're not enabling. We're not enabling you to get up and fight. So what do we do? And I'm reminded of this. Let me pull this out. It's not on a slide. You know this. We've talked about this. I'm not going to tell you where it is so that you can't turn, and then you have to listen to me say it. Second Chronicles 7. I have heard your prayer, and I have chosen this temple or this church as a place for making sacrifices. At times, I might shut up the heavens so that known rain falls, or command grasshoppers to devour your crops, or send plagues among you. Then, if my people who are called by name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer that is in this place. And I thought, Lord, are we, are we that? Are we the people that need to humble ourselves? And I think that um, for myself, I feel like, well, Lord, I feel like I have humbled myself. And this phrase came to me. I don't know if it was the Lord. But if that's what the kingdom looks like, if that's what Jesus looks like on the earth, am I following Jesus or am I following tradition? Am I following the ways of the kingdom? Am I praying for sick? Am I seeing blind eyes open? Am I he seeing the dead raised from the dead? The dead raised <laughs> from the dead, obviously. Uh, and I just thought, maybe I'm, maybe I'm following something other than Jesus. The thing about following Jesus, I think that it's easy to, to get into this word, to get into um, the rhythm of what we've been told to do and what we've been told to to act like, to dress up, to come to church at a certain time, to sing a special amount of songs, to pray a prayer, to hear a message, and to go home. And we can easily slide to that place and not really be reading the word um, the way it was written about what the kingdom looks like. I want to say this. If we, I think that our eyes can begin to open when we humble ourselves. And I think it's easy to say, well, we are humble. We, Jesus is talking about other people. Let me read this part to you. Hold on, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me say this. John the Baptist, before Jesus came, in Matthew 3, he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And that's in anticipation of the Lord coming. And Jesus came and revealed the kingdom. And I want to say on my heart, I'm feeling that if we repent, there is a new explosion of the kingdom that's coming. And if we're willing to lay down what we think we know about following Jesus, and we're willing to put, put our life under that microscope with the Lord and say, what part is of you and what part is tradition and what part is man-made? And let's get rid of the thing that doesn't fit. And let's go after the things that do fit. And I feel like the Lord is saying, wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. This is the, this refrain, this, this chorus that's been going through my heart. Wake up, O sleeper. And if he's calling us to wake up, it means we have been asleep. If he is putting this on our hearts to rise from the dead, then we have been dead. 
We may not be missing everything, but I think we're missing parts of it. I think there's so much more, and it, it excites me. I think if there's so much more, why am I content with this? And I'm not, and I think many of you are not, and I know there's so many younger people, they are not content with where the church is today. We are not satisfied. We say there has got to be more to this life of following Jesus. And that's when we say, then come on, bring it on, right? In Luke 7, we said this, the blind will receive sight and the lame will walk and those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf will hear, the devil will be raised and the good news will be preached to the poor. That's the kingdom of heaven. I haven't seen those things physically happen. I haven't seen physical blind eyes open. I haven't seen people physically raised from the dead. But there is a greater reality. And let me read this to you. It's in Isaiah 32. There is a greater reality. I do think those things happen. I know that the Lord wants to do this. But let me, let me read this to you. Hear this. Isaiah 32, we're starting in 1. Look, a righteous king is coming. And honest princes will rule under him. Those who are with him will rule under him. And each one will be like a shelter from the wind, a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert and a shadow of a great rock in the parched land. Then everyone who has eyes will be able to see the truth. And everyone who has ears will be able to hear it. Even the hotheads will be full of sense and understanding and those who stammer will speak out plainly. There is an opening of eyes that happens other than just the physical. And there is an opening of ears other than just the physical. And that is the kingdom. There is so much greater reward in those that can hear with their heart and see with their heart, and not just their eyes and their ears, physical. That's good coffee. Oh, so good. Uh, so... If there's this spiritual blindness, I think it's, I think it's right to say, is, could that be me? Could I be spiritually blinded? And I know this is a hard thing to hear. But the Lord's been walking this through with me for a couple of weeks, that, um, that I might be thinking I'm doing one thing, and I might be doing another. Let me, let me read this part to you in Luke 4, 7. Excuse me, Luke 7, we're continuing on. And I don't think this is on a slide. Jesus says this. Oh, let me, I skipped something. I wanted to go verse 29, and I'll read this to you really quick. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. They had repented, okay? But the Pharisees, okay, those churchy people, okay, and the people that were experts at being in church, careful now, that's like, those are my toes, they, re they rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. Not just because they hadn't been baptized, it's that turn of the heart they hadn't allowed to happen. They had not allowed their heart to be softened to the Lord. And they rejected God's purpose for their lives. Let that not be us, church. Let us not be rejecting God's purpose for our lives. So Jesus goes on. Hold on. Grab the steering wheel if you can. I'm kidding. Don't. He's in charge. To what then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace calling out to each other. We sang, the, we played the flute for you and you did not dance and we sang a dirge and you did not cry. Guys, this, this is the, hey, 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 I did this for you. Listen to this, you guys. Oh gosh, this is good. Isaiah 58, we've read it before. Listen to this version, okay? This is the New Living. I've got it. I think I've got it marked. Yep, it's back here, though. Listen to this. See if this sounds familiar. So the people of this generation, these are Jesus' words I just read. They're saying, hey, we played the flute and you didn't dance. Hey, we sang a song and you didn't sing with us, right? Listen to this, okay? Listen for that in these verses from Isaiah. Shout with a voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people of their sins. I'm going to take a little bit of liberty. Anytime it says Israel, I'm just going to use it as my people because that is us, okay? 
We are his people. They act so pious. They come to church every day, and they seem happy to learn about me. They act like a righteous people that would never abandon the laws of God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending that they want to be near me. Oh, we've fasted, or we came to church, they say. Aren't, why are you not impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves, praying, singing, reading the Bible, and you don't even notice it. I will tell you why, I respond. It's because you are fasting, you're doing these things to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? Is that the kind of fasting? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of repentance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. <sighs> you dress up. I, it says in burlap. I'd say you dress up in your fancy clothes and you cover yourselves with your, with your church stuff. Is that what you call repentance? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No. This is the kind of thing I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind the people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who are in need. And do not hide from your relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. And then you will call, and the Lord will answer, Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading, spreading vicious rumors. I always That social media always puts in my mind right there. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble, and then your light will shine out from darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you, continually giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. That sounds good. I'll take that. Yes, please. So what does it look like, right? So the challenge that I'm putting out there and the thing, this, this path that the Lord's been walking me down during these, these weeks and um, time is just, how do we do that? And it's so beautiful because the Lord's already begun it. I mean, you guys, it's amazing to see these times that we get to feed people on Saturday mornings. We get to give out food. And we get to pray over them. They get to have, we're giving them clothing. And I'll tell you, um, it's just such a stark contrast. We have people asking if they can come to church and help give out. They don't belong to a church. They're not involved in church. But they're coming saying, I've seen what you're doing. I've seen the, the videos. I've seen what you're, how you're helping people. How can I be a part of that? I'll take time off work. I'll come three hours, four hours, no problem. You're not going to feed me. You're not going to give me coffee. It's not going to be a soft seat. No problem. I'll come and do that. You want me to stand out in the cold and pray over people? Absolutely, I'll do that. It's very, very different than the mindset of a Sunday morning. I love these Saturday mornings. And there's so many, those of you that are getting to come, and if, you, if you're wanting to help, you can email us. But those, those of that are getting to come, they're saying, I love this. This is my favorite part of the whole week, is that we get, to, we get to be the church. We get to do church, and it's awesome. It's only the beginning. It's just the tip of the iceberg, but we get to love people, and we get to share the good news with the poor. And we get to see people come into the kingdom. And part of me just goes, well, what, what's the problem with Sunday morning? Like, why, why is it such a struggle to come on Sunday morning at times? I mean, I struggle. I know you struggle. It can feel the same thing. And we're hearing messages. And it's the good word. It, we're getting good insight. But I realized it's like this. During my week, the Lord showed me, Christy, it's as if you had a bunch of things that would dispense your needs, right? And so if how many times... During the week, do I need sleep? So maybe I, I hit that seven days a week, right? Maybe, maybe eight. I, I take naps. I'm a good napper. And I'm hitting this dispenser of sleep often, right? And how, how, how often do I need to eat? Every week, I need to eat. I need to eat. I need to eat. There's things that I need to do. Oh, I'm doing laundry. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing work. I'm getting on my phone. I'm getting on the computer. All these things. So these are things that I'm hitting. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, I need those things. 
How often am I hitting that dispenser of going to the word that I've heard on Sunday morning going, oh yeah, I needed that really big this week. And Mike and I were talking about it and we said, I feel like the reason Sunday mornings does not make us salivate for Sunday morning is because are we possibly not walking out church the rest of the days? And if I'm praying for someone and they say, I've been told I'm schizophrenic and I see things and I see people and I hear voices, would I not be running to the word and saying, Lord, how do I set this person free? You did this in your word. This is your kingdom come. How do I do this? And that's what Sunday morning is. So if I'm not walking out the plays during the week, I do not need to come on Sunday morning for the playbook. It just is a reality. So therefore, for me, for my life, I need to start playing the plays during the week. I've got to be praying for people and coming against something that I don't have an answer for. And when we regather, I get to hear from you and I get to hear from others that says, oh, the Lord taught me this. Let me share with you how he walked me through watching a blind eye opened in the physical, not just the spiritual. We're seeing both. But I want to have those challenges so that when we come on a Sunday morning, we have a desire to be here so we can learn and say, oh, good. On Monday, when I go see that person, I'm going to have an answer for them now. And I have learned from what you have learned and you have taught me. So that's my heart. I think that we need both. I just think we're missing some of the fun parts of the play. I think we're at, on the field is where the excitement actually happens. And maybe that's why we've grown dull on Sunday morning. I'm almost done. All right. I've got a couple more things. It's not as much fun when you guys aren't like in here. It is more fun when we're all together. I have to say that. So I feel like we, the Lord has walked us into this valley of decision. We're in a place where the Lord is letting us see things and we're getting a revelation of are we comfortable with the way church has been? And do we like it better that we get to sit on our couch and watch from home? I think that's comfortable, but I don't think that's the adventure he's called us to. There is an aspect that we're learning about how do we continue to fight in these times. And our muscles are being strengthened through this adversity. As a church, we are growing stronger, even though it may look like we're scattered. We are getting there, but we also have to realize where we're at and what the Lord is offering. I feel like it's, it's like this. It's the, it's the Israelites coming out of Egypt, and the Lord has put them in front of the Red Sea, and he has pushed back the walls of the water, and he says, you have an opportunity to walk through, but it is not a season. And like Anna said, it is not a season. It is a window of opportunity. Those waves are held back to walk into the things he has promised over our lives, but it will not stay open forever. It is this, it is this Isaiah 46, 13. It's this sense of urgency, and it's an invitation. It says, listen to me, you stubborn people. Oh, let that not be us. Who are so far from doing right, for I am ready to set things right, right, not in the distant future, but right now. I am ready to save my people and show my glory to my beloved. He is ready right now. It is not a distant thing. It is not somewhere in the next few years. He is asking us, are you ready to go now? Will you walk through this, this dry ground in the middle of this ocean and say, it is time for me to say, yes, I will walk into the promises that the Lord has for me. I feel like, as Mike was saying earlier, God's been merciful to us, church, in this season. He has allowed us to build an idol that makes us feel comfortable. And we can feel like we are pleasing the Lord by our buildings and our services and our songs and our comfortable 68 degree temperature and our good coffee, but there is more. And I feel like there is a line being drawn in the sand and saying, will you step into my kingdom come? Will you walk into 
my righteousness? Will you walk into the blind eyes opened and the deaf ears and the dead raised and the, the sick healed? And it is a great invitation because after that, Isaiah 58, that feels so hard to hear, he goes on to Isaiah 60. And if you don't know Isaiah 60, get out your Bible. It says, Arise, my kids. <laughs> I said that that way. Let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. And darkness as black as night covers the nations and the earth. But the glory of the Lord rises over you. This is the promise. This is the invitation. If we take his hand and we walk with him, he is going to arise over us. His glory will appear over us. Isaiah 61 talks about what is it going to look like. If we say yes to this open invitation, if we take his hand on another adventure and say, this is part, and we see in part, but I feel like he is pulling back the veil. He is opening our eyes that have been blinded to say, this was enough. And we are saying, now it is not enough. I am hungry for more of what the Lord has. There are greater things. He is a bigger God than what we've been putting him in the box of. Okay? So he says in Isaiah 61, and this is for us. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me, and that is poor of every aspect in life. That is not just poor financial. If you don't have Jesus, you're poor. If you are not walking in kingdom, you're poor. I am poor in areas of my life. I know it because I have not been walking this kingdom life as much as I know I could. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, proclaim that the captives will be released and the prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. The time has come. And with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, and a festive praise instead of despair. And in their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. This is what we get to do. And we, as Mike said, they don't all look the same. The things that we're called to do are not going to look the same. He has so as many fingerprints of us as people, so has he has a place for each of us in his kingdom. It does not have to look the same. And we are called to encourage and equip and strengthen so that this work can go out, that people can be um, come back to life. I brought this up. This was given me this morning. This is um, one of the sweet, amazing moms in this house has started this, um, this practice of putting these sweet little stones out for people to be reminded of God's goodness. This one says, praise him. It's a hashtag cornerstones, and I'm not great at hashtag, hashtags, but you can follow. A lot of the moms are doing this all over Castle Rock, all over the area. And I want to encourage you, moms, you have a place in this kingdom. What you are doing at home is incrementally important to the kingdom growing. It is our children that we raise up. It is our husbands that we support. It is speaking truth with life and love over them. It matters. When we were praying and, and worshiping just before the service, Mike was saying, I feel like there's a commissioning that needs to happen this morning. We have, it's that choice that we have, and the, the Lord is putting this on our heart as a church family that he has so much more, and we get to have um, a response to the invitation. If you want to come up real quick, Mike, I'm going to just finish with this 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2. I think that we have this on a slide. I'm just going to read it from this Bible so I don't have to flip from, from my page. It says, As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my favor, I heard you. His favor comes because we've turned our hearts towards him. That's that act of repentance and his favor he looks with favor on us. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. 
and now is the day of salvation. Let us be those that respond to this invitation. Did you want to share that? You're all stirred up, stirred up about your com- the commissioning. I'm just so, right here with her. Yeah, you can stand right here. Um, as I as I just kind of finished with the Lord, I felt like He was saying, um, "I'm right, I'm right there with you. He's with me, but I'm also right with each of you. I'm in this place of trying to figure out." Where do we go from here? What does the next step look like? Where does the garden path turn as we walk more into kingdom? We don't have all those answers right now, but we know that there's a hunger that's being stirred up, that aroma of kingdom, that smell that entices us towards him is increasing. So let us say yes now. Let us say, as we would say, in the Bible, let us make that covenant with the Lord to say, no matter what, we say yes. This is what the Lord, sorry, hold on. <laughs> this is what the Lord told me. He said, I'm setting you as the tip of the spear. I am setting you on the end, at the very tip of what I want to do as I want to pierce into darkness. I am setting you as the tip. Are you willing to go as the tip of the spear? And when I wrote it down, I wrote it, the tip of the spirit. And I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, oh, I'm better than I thought I was. (laughs) But uh, I feel like the Lord is asking us to be the tip of the spear. There are a lot of people in churches everywhere that are still hungry. They are sitting starving on milk. And they were not made for milk. And will we be the ones to break into darkness, to break into this place where our hearts have been clouded? Our vision does not see that we're stuck in a place of of in moving. Are we willing to go forward as the tip of the spear and bring that light, bring the life, and bring the aroma of kingdom that people say, that's what I've been hungering for. That's what my appetite needs to strengthen, to equip, to send me into the new adventure. Amen. So I think we'll pray because that's now I know how to close this. Not closing yet, though. Okay, Mike wants to share something. I, I just, I pray that what, what Christy just shared is, is so right on with where we're going and and it's, this is a hard message. I think last week was, I just felt like the Lord said, stir the waters. Um, Christy just plunged right in and started throwing punches here. <laughs> and I love it because the, the, it's, it's just looking at Hebrews 12 and it just says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. And so what son is not disciplined by his father? And you are not disciplined. If you're not disciplined, then you're illegitimate children and not true sons. And, and I feel like we're in a disciplining time right now, that the Lord is actually setting some things right in our lives. And what, what Christy said is so key right now, that will we say yes to this? We've been a church that has, is all about the grace, and, and yet what it's done is it, it's, it's lulled the church to sleep to say, well, we don't actually need to do any of these things. We just say we love God. Uh, and then we're good. And God says, if Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. The two go hand in hand. In, in Matthew 7, when the, when the man who builds his house on the rock, when, when the comparison is done and Jesus compares the one who built his house on the sand to the one who built his house on the rock, I, I think I shared this last week, but it's they both heard. One heard and then went about their way. No. Didn't say yes, but they heard. They had the truth. They knew it. Yeah. But, but they didn't move forward with it. The one who built his house on the rock, it says he heard and he put it into practice. Amen. 
So if we think that it's just, well, we just love God and he loves us and, and we get, and it's a lullaby Christianity, uh, wake up, church, wake up. I say this because I love you. Yeah. Wake up. It's time that we wake up. Yeah. It's time that we realize that there's a calling on our life and we're called to step into it. This is the commissioning that I believe the Lord has for us. We're actually called to do the commands of the Lord. Yeah. When we signed up for this thing, it wasn't just a, 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 a fire insurance. It, it, was, it was Lord and Savior. It was Lord, and if, you're, if he's Lord, then he's, he's the king, and there's a kingdom and a king's domain, and we're actually under his rule, and when he speaks, we listen. We're his servants. Yeah. We obey. Otherwise, we're not under his lordship. It, right, right in that same area where Jesus is talking about the, the, the man who builds his house on the rock, it, it's that he says, many will come and they will say, Lord, Lord, did we not do these things in your name? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we do all this stuff? He says, I don't even know you. Leave me. Go from me. You go, wait a minute, but that's not, that's not the Christianity that I've been taught. I've been taught that you love everyone and that you're for everyone and that you're going to be with everyone and that everyone is in your kingdom. And he goes, I don't know you. Away from me, you lawless people, you people that do not obey my commands. This might be a hard message, but it's a message that needs to be spoken because the church needs to wake up. He loves us. He desires to be with us, but he's calling for his bride to rise up. Yeah, and he, he died for more than what we're giving him right now. Yeah. So, and I know, I'm like, for people that were, you know, that this, you may not be a believer right now, you're like, oh, this isn't an easy message, and I think sometimes we sugarcoat the message of, yeah. of, well, all you need to do is just say this prayer, and God's with you, and no, you actually die to yourself. You pick up the cross that Jesus carried, and you carry that cross, and, and it, it's, not, it's not just a simple check the box, and you're in. Yeah. It says many are invited, but only few come. Only few are chosen. There's a narrow way, and only few find it. There's not a lot that are going to find it. Many will think that they're going to come into the kingdom. Many think that they're going to be those, and I don't want us to be sadly mistaken. It says many will be deceived. Many will be deceived. Those are the believers. Those are the ones that were, or say they're following Christ, and it says many will be deceived in that day. Yeah. Let's not be those that are deceived. So I, this commissioning, I want to, you know, I talked about Isaiah 6, but I want you to hear this too, especially with what Christy said. We're the tip of the spirit. <laughs> I love that. The tip of the spirit, but it's the tip of the spirit. And right before Isaiah 60, I believe, is a commissioning. It says this in verse 21 of Isaiah 59. It says, as for me, this is the covenant for them. This is the commissioning for them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you and my words that I have put in your mouth. So think of Isaiah 6 when the, when the seraph puts the coal on Isaiah's mouth. And this is the spirit that I have put on your mouth and in your mouth. It will not depart from your mouth, nor from your mouth. I'm sorry, will not depart from your mouth or from the mouth of your children or from the mouth of their descendants from this time on and forever. And then it says, arise, shine. Amen. And it, it, part of a commissioning, if you ever see like the, the commissioning that where the, there's like a king that commissions the, the knights and he'll, and he'll knight them and commission them. And then what do they do? They rise. And now they're under the commission of the king. 
And this is the commission that we're called to is now once we, we go low, we kneel down, we bow before him, and he commissions us, and he sets his spirit in our hearts. He moves that heart of stone. He replaces it with the heart of flesh. It's that heart of the spirit that now we move according to the spirit. We move according to him and nothing else. And he says, now arise, yeah. and my spirit will go on, will be on you. It says, arise, shine. And it says, your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. And, and this is when there's darkness over the earth and there's thick darkness over the people. It says, the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Amen. There's a, there's a light that comes. It says, right after that, it says, nations will come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come. There's a harvest that's now ripe, yeah. but the labors are few. And he's calling his bride to arise. Yeah. Amen. I want to, I, I think we can't end this thing without giving just people an opportunity right now to receive Jesus, to accept Christ. And it is, it's, it's laying down your life and accepting his life yeah. and say, God, I, I no longer live for me. I live for you. And it's a beautiful life that we get to live. It's abundant life that we get to live. It's an adventure that we get to live. And here's the thing. It's what you were created for. Yeah, that's right. You will not live in what you were created for. You will not find your purpose in life. You will not find anything. You will not find life until you say yes to Jesus. Yeah, that's right. So, and, and in it, even though it's death to yourself and to your own ways, and it's, it's life unto him, and he rises, and his glory comes upon you, and it is an amazing life that you live, but don't think that it's about you. It's about him now from yeah. this moment forward. Amen. He empowers you. He strengthens you. He gives you everything you need. It's not about what you can do. It's what he can do through you. So I just want to give you that opportunity right now. Don't miss this opportunity. Yeah. If, if you've, and here's the thing, you may think you've been living for him. You may think that you're a believer, that you're, you're going after it. I want you to rethink things right now. Say, have I truly laid my life down for him? Have I really made that decision to say yes to him? Do I love him because I'm following his commands and I'm, and I'm going after him? Or am I, am I saying I love him and am I living my own life and continuing to do the things that I want to do? Yeah. Continuing to live in my own pleasures and my own desires. It's not about us loving our own lives. It's about us receiving his love. Because his love is better than the love that we can have for our own lives. And eventually, we're going to come to a point where we realize it's not what I thought it was. Yeah. Let's figure it out now and not then. Let's begin to live the life now and not then. Amen. So if that's you, you can, I'm going to have you repeat this prayer, but don't think yeah. that this prayer is going to do it. But what this is, is this is, let's let, say it from your heart. Let it, let it penetrate and pierce your heart right now and let the Spirit come in and begin to, to, to set you apart and to consecrate you and to, to circumcise your heart in this time that, that you would actually begin to see more clearly and hear more clearly as those things come off, as those, those, those hardened things that, we've, that we have had in our hearts that they now are removed, that the the idol of Sunday morning service and the way that we've seen church, the way that we've, we've, lift, we've created our own thing and we've said, God, look at how good we are and look at what we're doing. And God goes, that's, that's not me. That's not my heart. That's not my church. Right. So just repeat this after me. Yeah. Lord Jesus, and I just say this from my heart. Yeah. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry, sorry. for the way that I've lived my life. Yeah. Lord, I turn from my ways, from all the things that I thought were good, from all the ways that I have created to say that I'm living for you. All the things that I built up, I turn from those ways. And, 
and I say, I want to live your way. I want to be led by your spirit. Forgive me. I repent. I turn from those ways. Just as, as, as they were baptized by John in a baptism of repentance, I repent of those things. And I set my eyes on you, the author and perfecter of my faith, Jesus. Jesus, will you be Lord of my life? Will you be Savior of my life? I declare you as king over my life, over my family. I say yes to you that I will walk in your ways from this day forward. Commission me to be your servant, your humble servant, dependent upon you from this day forward. May I not love my own life, but may I receive the love you have for the life that you've given me and walk in the ways that you have for me from this day forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Thank you for giving us this precious time this morning on Mother's Day. Have a great, great Sunday and a blessed week. And, and start to ask the Lord, have dialogue with him. What's next? Yeah, that commissioning. <laughs> that commissioning, the next step is there's a mission that you're to go on. There's a mission statement. There's a plan for your life. Let the Lord reveal it to you. We love you guys. We're so honored and encouraged by just what the Lord is doing in and through us. And I just love your hearts. So let's make this the first of many days to come where we see his kingdom come. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.